Brian, why are we turning around? We were almost on the way back. Because I saw a very blue color on the side of the road. Uh, and here it is, there's a Lago Blue coupe sitting in the uh, parking lot over there. Yeah, but this is that's Lago Blue, right? The farb, the farb? Green! He said green! Yeah! He said yeah. green! <laughs> Not the answer I wanted. Oh, about, to hit, about to hit stop. That is blue! How do you see green that is blue? All right, welcome to Ring Leaders, a series where Ken Block and I build our dream Audis. This is a car that I should have done because I started working on it 17 years ago. It's my 1990 Coupe Quattro, and it's on its way to being a hill climb monster. This is Ken Block's brand new Sport Quattro. In less than three days, this and this need to be at SEMA to be revealed for the first time in the Toyo booth. Yeah, there's a lot left to do. And we only bought that about three months ago, which, uh, we gotta go by in Germany. Enjoy. Is everybody ready? We are going to Germany. Look at, this, look at the level of excitement. <laughs> it, it is a little early in the morning. We drove like three hours to come here, and this is LCE. But we did get up to yeah, 100, so we got a pun. Which, which helps get the blood up <laughs> no, in the morning. We woke, <laughs> up, we woke up at five to yeah. then leave at six-ish, 275 miles an hour, 275 KPH, kph thanks to this guy. We said to Reuven, we need a good like heritage car for Ken. Sport Quattro, something like that. And he said, we should come talk to the people here at LCE. So that's exactly what we're here to do. They have a vehicle and that has a great name. It's called the Turbo Monster. How can you not like a car named the Turbo Monster? I just want you to realize that anytime Brian speaks throughout this whole entire series, he's speaking with a smile. Look, he can't even <laughs> hold it back right now. He's buying Audis with this guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This no, is it's dream just the, it's yeah, just like yeah, dream. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the Ford years, were, they were fun. They were fun. But this is like. This is ridiculous. This is ultimate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's perfect. Yeah. All right, let's go so, inside. Let's see some okay. of these things. <laughs> You put this here just for yeah, him, yeah, didn't like, you? Yeah, he's like, I'll get him with this one right here. Perfect. The trap is set. By the way, what's hey, your name? Um, Daniel. Nice to meet you. Daniel. And that's everybody else. We're not going to remember yes. all your names. Hey. hey. So maybe we, we walk through the shop real quick? Yeah, yeah absolutely. I know somebody's really excited about this wagon right here. Yeah, yeah, but I guess we're coming here to talk yeah, about Yeah, we're this. coming here to we talk about We didn't come for this. Well, this is what we came here to talk about today. <laughs> Look at this thing. <laughs> Yeah. So this is car number one for you guys. How many have you built? We actually, we are now in the fifth car uh, building, um, but we have, uh, good yesterday, I think there were maybe a, another two customers. So I think we have about 10, 10 cars at least uh, on order at the moment. Wow. Which is uh, for us much more than we ever anticipated. Um, so, and uh, we are hiring, we are hiring. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out in the comments if you want to work here in this gorgeous shop and build these things. By the way, look at the, I know. Look at the cold the, side on that thing. The compressor housing is crazy. So this is a, a new development from uh, TTE uh, mm -hmm. turbochargers. So we work with them together. So you see us on, on the car. The car made uh, over 1000 horsepower on some special fuel. Then we said, okay, we need something a little bit more that is dri drivable because this turbo was coming, you know, at 5000 RPM almost. Mm. So a huge lag um, yeah, yeah, yeah. and we said we, we need something for the customers. I mean, Ken is uh, obviously totally different, but uh, yeah, yeah. But it's nice to have a, a it's nice to have a power band. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so anyway, so Ken, what is, just, just give it to the people, what, what do you want out of a daily driver? It's not even a daily driver, it's a fun car. Yeah, well, I love the groupie era so much of rally because that's what initially got me into rally. What Audi was doing with the Quattro and then when Audi took the Quattro to Pikes Peak and actually won in 85 and 87. So all that basically got me into rally and it was the beginnings of me being a fan mm -hmm. uh, of Audi. And a fan, and a fan of rally and yeah. all-wheel drive cars. Yeah. So what you're saying is if there was no Audi, there'd be no you. <laughs> I mean, there'd be you, but you'd just like be like still making shoes or something. <laughs> well, nothing 
without me. Well, and there's also your side of things, too, that you have to finish a project. Which one? <laughs> <laughs> All of them? Some of them? One of them. What in particular that you had a good quote about yesterday? You've had it longer than my daughter's been alive. Yeah. <laughs> Funny story is when I first met Ken, I was working at the magazine and Ken was like, hey, can you do, can you help me out with some stuff? I was like, yeah, sure. And he's like, dude, I feel like I, I need to pay you for this. And I was like, no, nah, don't worry about it. It's totally cool. He's like, well, how about I just buy you something for your car? And I was like, sure, get me a turbo. That was 16 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> the car is still normally aspirated. <laughs> Many generations have passed. So. The idea was, was Ken was like, well, if, if I'm going to build a car, you need to finish your car. Well, and I think part of it, too, is like I, we have this great photo of you with the RWB and me with the RS200. It's like a really good, iconic photo that shows us as company owners yep. of Hoonigan and what we drive and that that's how into the motorsports and car market that we are, that we own own this stuff. I want to re redo that, right? But yeah. with a real sense of purpose for today. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I think with, with Audi, there's a great opportunity to do something that would be more along the lines of what I'd want. Now that I've driven an actual Sport Quattro, I know what they're like. They're quite tame. <laughs> 10 second review. Woo, it's definitely an 80s car. It, I mean, it was a monster in its day, yeah. but in the 1980s, cars were slow. So I think the, the replica market really gives us a place to get something that's very similar to, in the construction yeah. with how they actually built those cars. But we can put an engine that's engineered today to get the maximum amount of power and what we want out of it so I can go play. You have to understand, so like the Sport Quattro, right, which was the homologation version of the Ur Quattro, is a vehicle that like 15 years ago was maybe 80 to 100 grand and now they are half a million easy and the actual rally cars like the original rally cars are selling for like two million dollars plus that's it it's now a pure like that's a car you can't modify it anymore like it's because yeah. it's even i mean that's even more expensive than the rs 200s ago and it's funny because the rs 200 was one of your two dream cars and then you got it, only to realize that maybe it wasn't as dreamy as you thought. <laughs> what the fuck is this? Yeah, I mean, you never really talked about that. So, like, I mean, the RS200 was sort of, I don't want to say disappointing experience, because the car itself just sitting is this amazing car, but it just didn't drive anything like you thought it would. The main thing is it's a very small cabin space. So as a race car, there's more room in it. But as a road car, it, it has very little room. I have to drive the car with my shoes off because that's the only way my feet will fit in the footwell to drive. <laughs> it wasn't a great like daily driver sort of fun car that I wanted it to be. So, so what lesson have you learned <laughs> as we embark on buying another Group B legend? Well, there's, there's several things. You know, that was one of the 200 homologation cars. So you don't want to modify it too yep. much. So for us to be able to go find a replica, and get the horsepower out that we want, put a handbrake in it, you know, make it as light as we want yep. to make it, have the sound, and be able to go play with the car. If I put it into a snowbank, I'm not going to care as much compared to actually driving one of the original 200. So I think it's really good that we're able to go this direction, and, and these things are really popular because there's a lot of people that want to do oh, yeah. what I want to do. So the replica market for the Sport Quattro is really quite in demand. So the crazy thing about the replica market right now is that you have a lot of like reputable builders building cars out there and they're doing it the same way Audi did back in the day. So they're taking the front half of what was a 4,000 in the US and then an Ur Quattro, cutting them in half and, and making one car out of them. So when you look at them side by side, like they, on the good ones, they look just like a Sport Quattro. It's done the same way, built the same way. But they're more modernized, so like they're actually putting in like better frame supports and a lot of things that they've learned like have gone bad on those cars. So like in some ways, it's a replica, but it's actually like a better version of the original. We we set out, we're like, okay, let's go find some, let's go find a place, let's see who can build one. One company kept popping up, which was a company called LCE in Germany, and they said, oh, you want one? That's great. Uh, it's a two and a half year waiting list. So apparently replicas have become extremely popular. And because they're all custom built, right? Like these guys, they only build two or three a year at a max. It's like one of the reasons that they're set back. It's such a big build to get them done. We went spoke to the guys in LCE. They were like, yeah, that's awesome. Uh, we'd love to build you one. How is 
two that like 20, 2025 sounds. We're like, no, that's not going to work for us at all. You must have like a client car or something that we can buy and then modify from there. And he was like, ah, and I could hear in his voice that he had something he didn't want to sell us. So I just kept pushing. And pushing, pushing. And in the end, he actually had a car that in the Audi world was already quite famous. It's called the Turbo Monster. And it was their demo car that they built to like kind of promote their brand. And they had just pulled the engine out of it and they were planning some other stuff for it. And we're like, well, we can take that. So while we were in Germany, we went to go look at it. So is it going all black again? I'm standing with that. <laughs> you know what? The RS200 was all black. A lot of my Ford stuff was all black. Earlier in my life, I had a lot of white cars, so white trucks, white Suburban, white 190E. I'd like to go white with a lot of my Audi stuff. Yeah, I, it's cool. I remember my first white car. Oh. <laughs> so my car will actually be a really nice gloss white paint underneath, and then we'll put a flat white vinyl on top on most of it. So working on that design, but I really love all the original Quattro imagery from mm. those days, like the logos. It's so easy. Yeah, it's so good. Um, and they're... They've said they can give me the files, like oh, the really? rings with the like line blend in it. Weird, I've been asking for years. <laughs> Timo likes you more, apparently. <laughs> so this is gonna be like. Oh, wait, wait, real quick. Yeah. Rotiforms. Do we do turbo fans? We should. <laughs> we should. Have you spoken to them yet on wheels? No. Okay. Would you do the KB1 or you want to do a new wheel for the car? I don't know. Like the five spoke is so strong on that mm -hmm. car. It was such a good race style wheel for mm -hmm. that car. And so I'd love to do some homage to that wheel. It's also, I'll have to show you the one work on for my car. Oh, <laughs> is it five spoke? <laughs> <laughs> it may or may not be the S1 E2 wheel. Oh, okay, so it's the star it's the, style. It's the big, like, chunky five spoke, like the magnesium wheel. So I think that's it. Is there any questions, any other ideas for this car? I mean, the only, I think, question is, like, what are you going to use it for? So I, I'd really, like, I'm building this car to actually have fun with it, to drive it around town at home and to, like, actually go and film some fun stuff with it. Yeah. So, yeah, I can't wait. So uh, my Coupe Quattro... I'm wait, are we going to... Race cars or do something? Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, that's a good this versus that. <laughs> Ooh. I mean, it's basically this versus this. Still. <laughs> Still, that's, yeah, that's, that's, that's a good one. one. Just change it. <laughs> it's like this versus this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, if you want to see us race on this versus this, let us know. So my car, I bought this car in 2004. Present to myself for landing like my first salary job. I'm rich, bitch. <laughs> I had like big plans for it and then life happened. So, but unfortunately I took most of it apart before life happened. And I, it was just a stock car for years and I took it apart. It actually ran the whole time. Like it actually, like the motor ran, but I pulled the suspension apart, left it on jack stands, moved to California, left the car in New York, moved it like from garage to garage, to friends' houses, to like my grandma's house. And then eventually Tony Angelo took it and it was in his shop. And then he brought it back to California. And then it got to California and it still sat for four years in the back of the donut shop. By the way, Brian's very smart, has a lot of common sense, but when it comes to cars, no common sense. No, wildly out of control. Why are you the way that you are? So over the past couple months, I've been, I tore the car down, we caged it. I got a one of 40 body kit from a company called Prior Design. You know, just been taking all the parts that I've been putting in boxes for years and putting up on really high shelves. I've been taking those down and installing them on the car. Hank Iroz, you know Hank well. By the way, I don't like this thing. I've never seen an all-wheel drive car that looks like this. He was the RS3 that kind of beat Ken on a race or two. And um, <laughs> he's built my engine for me. So now all of that's going to go together. The car will remain blue. It'll never be green. Both of our cars- But you're will... using the green paint though, right? I'm using the green paint <laughs> to paint it blue. Yeah. Looks um, green to me. Does it look green to you? Really? What color does it look to you, Will? It looks green. What? Then the man in Germany with the same color car tell you it looks green. <laughs> well, cut to that. Brian, why are we turning around? We were almost on the way back. Because I saw a very blue color on the side of the road. Uh -huh. And here it is, there's a Lago Blue. Lago, Lago. Lago Blue Coop sitting you, in the uh, parking lot over there. And you, if someone's yeah. getting in it, this is going to get really awkward. Please ask the owner what color they think their car is. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Ah, this one. Yeah, 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 ah. that's my coupe right Excuse there. Excuse me. Johnny Young. 
Jetzt können wir, können wir ein Bild von Ihrem Auto machen. Ja, aber das ist das ist Lago Blue, oder? Die Farbe, wissen Sie die Farbe? Ja, Lago Blue ist alles. Grün! He said green! Ja! Yeah. Yeah. Grün! <lacht> It's green! That's not the answer I wanted. This is really Ugh, about, to hit, about to hit stop. My whole life is a lie. I love that Ken's not getting out of the Ken car for this so, conversation. Ken is so unenthused by this. The owner said it's green. Yes! No, green. that's blue! Brian. You're colorblind. I'm sorry, German, sir, to let you know. German, in Germany, your colorblindness test doesn't work. A German person that is blue. owning this vehicle. How do you today. see green? That is it's blue. Green, green vehicle. Green. It's not, it's blue. How do you see green? The good news is the car is actually going to run. And uh, if you're watching this and this is just uploaded next week, the cars, both of ours, will be out front at the Toyo booth. After that, we're going to actually have a whole series on these cars. So we'll do a, a breakdown on both cars, like on a special build bio for both Ken's car and my car. And then we're going to actually go have some fun with them. What do you yeah, want to do? This with versus them? this. This versus this. <laughs> Ken teaches me to Jim Connor and all the insane inline five cylinder noises you can have. It's gonna be a good time. Yeah. But now that Ken is officially on Team Audi, by the way, congratulations again. I uh, thanks for that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I had nothing to do with this, I swear. I did it all. <laughs>